bad dude. This is my sister Cindy, and you never would have heard of Steve-O if it wasn't for her. So I'm gonna tell the incredible story of our relationship, and let's go. We definitely had an unusual upbringing, flying all over the world. And when we were on airplanes as babies, our parents didn't want to be embarrassed by us crying, so they fed us booze. A teaspoonful of Drambuie did the trick. And maybe sometimes, in your case, more than a teaspoonful. <laughs> yeah, how do you know it was a teaspoon? Well, that's what mom said. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when you were about mm, three or four, and uh, you got this big wheel and you used to ride around on it with your bib backwards because you were a little obsessed with superheroes. It's pretty rad to use your bib as a cape when you're like three years old. <laughs> you had delusions of grandeur even then. You were a handful. I mean, mom always said if you'd been first, you'd have been an only child. Yeah. When I started listening to heavy metal music and I wanted to dress up as like a rock star for Halloween, like you painted on my kiss makeup. That, that with my cool. eyeliner. We were roommates a few times. And every time it was because my sister was bailing me out. Like the time when I was supposed to spend the summer with my girlfriend, but I wasn't supposed to be sleeping in her bedroom. And I not only slept in her bedroom, but I peed in the bed while sleeping and I had to go. So I called up Cindy, Cindy Wynn, and I spent the rest of that summer with her. <laughs> and then I was homeless for three years. It wasn't homeless, it was couch surfing. Yeah, and it was doable for me to be couch surfing when I had a car, but after two DUIs, then life sucked too bad. And I called Cindy and said, like, help. So that's when I moved in to your house in Albuquerque. I had just learned how to do backflips and I was so excited about it. I said, Cindy, I want you to videotape me while I'm asleep. Really make sure you can tell I'm sleeping and then wake me up and I'll do a backflip right away. It's time to get up in the morning. <laughs> In that footage, you can see what a slob I was. <laughs> and at that time, Cindy worked at the Albuquerque Journal. And she found a question that said, what's the only college with no tuition? Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Clown College. And I left a sticky note for you. Yeah, because she thought this could get my brother the fuck out of my house. <laughs> I don't think I was that harsh, but it was definitely um, a good option. Before I found out if I had gotten into clown college, I burned the skin off of half of my face and you took the photos of the carnage. You were still supposed to, I think, stay out of the sun oh when God. you went to Sarasota, Florida Dude. to go to clown college. I'm like, how am I gonna put on grease paint? <laughs> After clown college, I wasn't one of the clowns who got a contract with the circus. So I came back to Cindy's house to sell more weed. I was pissed at that point. Now my stunts were gonna be way crazier. I figured out how to light my whole body on fire and do a backflip with my whole body on fire. Cindy was right there holding the wet blanket to put me out. The only time Cindy was ever a wet blanket. The universe kind of works in weird ways. If you hadn't gotten into clown college, you wouldn't have had the job at the Hannaford Family Circus at the swap shop, and you wouldn't have collected all of the poo that I was furious, but that was one of the first season one jackass, yeah. like iconic stunts. And it's on the side of the house. And after we got the bit, the producer said, hey, like, uh, we'll, we'll clean this up. And I said, no, no. I'll handle that later. I didn't want to inconvenience the producers. And when we left, there was like a monsoon of rain. It was just a swamp of elephant poop. That is probably the maddest I've ever been at you. Well, yeah, and, and you didn't kick me out at that point. But very shortly thereafter, when I didn't show up for like three days because I was on a cocaine bender and I was supposed to do something with you, like then you kicked me out. So I was homeless when Jackass came out on TV. You were couch surfing. And then when you ran out of couches, I took you back. 
I was so proud of you. You had all of your video footage really well archived, but every time you were in like a catalog, I clipped it out and I put it in that binder and for years until it got to just be too much for me to keep up with. Do you remember when you were in Hustler? Uh -huh. <laughs> My neighbor, she bought it. Oh, so sorry. she put the sticky notes on it for me so I could read the article without having to see things sisters don't need to see. So not, not long after Jackass came out, you got pregnant with your first kid and I became like this crazy uncle. <laughs> oh. oh, nasty. You totally swooped in and did your cool uncle stuff, spinning her around all crazy. Yeah. And, um, and you would be like the fun uncle. Hi. Yeah. Well, yeah, do you sorry. remember when you first started getting money and you wanted to buy Cass something diamond, and, yeah. and you were like, I'm going to get my niece a diamond. And I was, you know, I was like, that's for you. Like that's bragging rights for you. What is a three-year-old or a five-year-old going to do with a flipping <laughs> diamond? You know, that is just arrogant she, bullshit. She said, if you want to spend a bunch of money on a diamond, why don't you buy her a fucking playground in the back? And, and so you were like, I will get her a swing set, but it has to be a rad swing set. You pushing Dill on the swing, like yeah. that swing set was the best thing ever. Better than a diamond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Once Jackass became what it became, then you got in the habit of like pimping me out. <laughs> so he was a high school teacher and she would just whore me down the river. I was at the football games and she's like promoting it. I've never pimped you out for like gratuitous things. Right, it's never right. been for my own benefit, right, okay. but the Down Syndrome buddy walk or the yeah, high schooler's education, you know, lecturing on the economics yeah. of Hollywood. And now Cindy works for this nonprofit news organization. I'm the editor of Lakeland Now in Lakeland, Florida. And for this fundraiser that they had in December, Cindy once again whored me out to do a show in the theater. <laughs> And I got here and called her up in her own driveway. I said, Cindy, I can't make it. <laughs> She's having a heart attack. <laughs> Hello? Cindy Wind. Hey, Squirt, how are you? Well, I'm pretty good. Uh-oh. Um, my driver's license is expired. So, like, I can't travel. And so my brain is already going, all right, well, we can, um, uh, we can FedEx, we can do this, we can do that. Oh, uh, does FedEx even work? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're such an asshole. I love you so much. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I wanted to be here for Christmas with Cindy and her kids. And on Christmas, Cindy buys this slide for her stairs. Dylan's big gift this year because he's a sensory seeker and, and he loves swinging and, and all of that was gonna be this stair slide. But I didn't want to have him go down it until I had tested it. I absolutely would not be where I am today if it wasn't for my sister's support and encouragement. I am not sure about that. I mean, I think you would have found a way. I don't know what it would have been, but you know, I mean, I'm happy to have helped. I think you would have found a way anyway, but whatever help I gave you, you have done so much for us like over the years too. And um, it's just really cool. So our relationship continues to be awesome. And I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. And that's it, dude. <laughs>